we are starting a new chapter in human physiology that is chemical coordination and integration basically in control and coordination there are two systems which help in controlling and coordinating all the functions of the uh, of our body one is the nervous system which we call the neural control and coordination and the second one is by chemicals which are called hormones and these hormones are secreted by endocrine glands so basically in this chapter we talk of endocrine glands we can also write this chapter as endocrine system where we would be discussing all endocrine glands their structure the hormones which they secrete as well as the functions of those hormones but before that we need to understand that when we are talking of chemical coordination there are two things first the endocrine glands and these endocrine glands they are ductless glands so we will start with this uh, types of glands the first we are talking of is endocrine gland the other glands are known as exocrine glands and the third type of glands are called heterocrine glands and how do we differentiate between these endocrine glands are ductless glands ductless glands that means their secretions are directly poured into the blood so the secretion directly comes out there is no tube or no duct which is carrying this secretion to that particular organ or target organ exocrine glands they secrete whatever secretion they have through a duct so they are called glands with ducts so ducts are present and heterocrine glands have one part as exocrine and one part as endocrine so they have both endocrine part as well as exocrine part such glands are called heterocrine crine glands the examples endocrine gland example we can take of all endocrine glands here thyroid gland pituitary these glands all endocrine glands would come here exocrine glands means they are pouring their secretion through a duct we can have the example of say salivary glands salivary glands pour their secretion that is saliva through the ducts which they have and different salivary glands have different ducts similarly we can have the example of liver here liver also has a secretion which we call bile and the bile is secreted out through all those various ducts which we call bile duct common bile duct and so on so there are ducts which are carrying this secretion in case of this we said one gland is having two parts endocrine as well as exocrine so if we take the example of pancreas in pancreas there are two parts the endocrine parts <clears throat> that is known as islets of langerhans this is endocrine it produces hormones that is the glucagon and insulin whereas exocrine part which are known as adrenal cells and they secrete the pancreatic juice and pancreatic juice is poured into the duodenum with the help of a duct so this juice comes into duodenum by a duct so a part of the gland is endocrine and a part of the gland is exocrine such glands are termed as heterocrine glands and we take the examples of pancreas testes and ovaries testes and ovaries for example testes the endocrine part that is leddig cells they secrete testosterone that is without any duct 
Whereas the seminiferous tubules which produce the sperms, then the sperms are conducted by the tubes that is vasa efferentia and all those ducts, rete testes, there are so many tubes which are going to pour or bring that uh, those sperms out. Similarly with the ovaries, in ovaries also hormone is produced by follicular cells, these are, this is endocrine function. But the egg which is released, then that is taken by the fallopian tube. So there is some tube uh, part which is carrying the secretion, whereas there is one part which is endocrine. So such uh, glands are called heterocrine. We classify them into these three categories. In this chapter, our focus is on endocrine glands. Endocrine glands have their secretion. And as we said, the secretion is mainly poured into blood. But there are certain uh, endocrine cells which secrete local hormones like gastrin. So these cells produce gastrin and it directly comes into the stomach and that's where it helps in its uh, function. But most of the times, the secretion, the secretion is known as hormone. Hormones are no, also known as chemical messengers. Because they are helping in some kind of communication, coordination, but they are chemicals and that's why they are known as chemical messenger or we call them hormone. Here we will talk about two scientists also and their contribution. The first hormone to be discovered was secreted. This is the first hormone which was discovered and the scientists who discovered this hormone were Bayless and Starling. And Starling was the same scientist who named these chemicals as Hormone. So here we write that the term hormone was also given by Starling. So Starling was the one who was involved in the discovery of the hormone as well as in naming. The name hormone is uh, from the original root word which means or which is hormone. Hormone means to excite. So it was believed that these are the chemicals which actually is, uh, excite a particular gland or an organ for a particular function. But this actually nowadays is a misnomer because there are so many hormones and their activities which are sort of inhibitory. They bring down the activities. But this term is commonly used. We still use it. But we have to still understand the function or uh, sorry the term or the meaning of the term. So hormone means to excite. But when we are using the word hormone, we are talking of the chemicals which increase the activity. That means they excite a particular process or they even inhibit the process also. So the first hormone to be discovered as we have written is the secretin, which is secreted by the mucosa part. Now, the first hormone which was isolated was different. That was insulin. So, first hormone to be isolated was insulin. So, first discovered was secreted and first isolated was insulin. And the scientist who helped in isolation of this were Banting and MacLeod and they isolated it from the pancreas of dog. From pancreas of dog. So this is some basic uh, information about the discovery of these hormones. So uh, two things we have to talk of. One is all different types of endocrine glands and their hormones, this, these hormones 
they have uh, some roles to play and after their roles are played uh, they get used up there is hyper condition also if the hormone is more than normal then again it will re uh, create some kind of uh, conditions which could be diseases and hyper condition can also result into some kind of defects so we will take all these endocrine glands and their hormones but to understand what exactly we'll be uh, dealing with in this chapter endocrine glands which are ductless glands and they are different from these two so we will be talking about all endocrine glands plus heterocrine glands why we need to discuss these glands because these glands also have a part in their uh, structure which is endocrine part these are not purely endocrine and that's why there's a separate category so we'll be talking about endocrine as well as heterocrine glands and hormones few scientists their contribution important now in the next uh, chap uh, sorry in the next video we will be talking about what are the properties of the hormones and how do they work some work at the site where they are produced or secreted and some work at a distant target organ so how is that possible and then we will take up different endocrine glands their classification based on the origin which tissue have they originated from and then we'll come to the actual glands